Hello and welcome to the Potty Mouth Preacher! I am Lisa Cizak, your host, transforming women's minds, bodies, and souls one F-bomb at a time. Do not forget to subscribe to my channel. I would really, really appreciate this. As a new podcaster, it helps me get seen and it helps more women be able to find me and more women be able to transform their minds, bodies, and souls one F-bomb at a time and become the women that God created them to be. Subscribe, rate, and review me. Please leave a nice review. I appreciate you. <laughs> I am Lisa Cizak, number one international best-selling author of Portal Tears, drowning the demons beneath the fat to keep the weight from coming back. Together, we are going to explore all the reasons you are in this crippling cycle of gaining weight and losing yourself, gaining weight and losing yourself. I have a question for you. What if your struggle with weight has nothing to do with food and exercise? What if it's actually a reflection of your emotional and spiritual health? Think about that for a moment. That is what we are going to uncover. Join me as I share my raw and real vulnerable journey back to myself and God interview incredible women I've had the honor of working with who have also transformed into the healthiest versions of themselves. And most importantly, I'm going to give you easy steps that you can implement each episode, soul work I call it, that will help you get out of this cycle you've been of gaining weight and losing yourself over and over again, finally lose the weight for good, and become the woman God created you to be. On today's episode, I am talking about the burning question you all have been asking me, Lisa, how did you lose 80 pounds? So I'm going to tell you how I lost the 80 pounds. You're not going to like it, though. You're not going to like what I have to say. And more importantly, why it boomeranged back. So as always, before we get started, I'm going to help you shift gears so that you can focus totally on yourself during this experience. So go ahead and give me three deep cleansing breaths, closing your eyes if you are able to, not if you are driving. And when I say a deep, say a deep cleansing breath, I mean, okay, three of those. And with each exhale, I want you to pretend like your device that you're listening or hopefully watching me on has a trap door and you are leaving on the outside all of your labels of wife, mother, daughter, boss, employee, friend, whatever it is, whatever, all these responsibilities that you have weighing you down, you're leaving them on the outside. You're not going to need them when you're in here with me. It's just me, you, and God in here. Okay? And also, I know you got stuff weighing you down in your head. Keep your eyes closed if you can. Focus inward while I'm talking. Get rid of the doubt, the fear, the anxiety, the shame, the disappointment, whatever it is that's weighing you down, woman, let it go. Put it on the outside of your device. Boom, 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 boom. And then give me three more deep cleansing breaths in and out. One more deep cleansing breath. Let all that shit out. Whew. Let it out. And then name three celebrations from when you saw me last. Remembering that no celebration is too small to celebrate. We are celebrating each step 
along the way of realizing your vision of what it is you actually want in your life, how you want to look, how you want to feel, right? We are celebrating that. I'm going to share with you a celebration that I absolutely love that someone that listened to it's time to land the plane visualization that I did in the previous episode, episode four. If you have not listened to episode four yet, go back and listen to it. This is all about envisioning. Have you actually allowed yourself to envision and feel what it's going to feel like to be this woman that you're trying to be for so many years? envision her. Okay. So you have to hear this. I'm going to read this to you. So she did the time to land the plane visualization in the last episode. And she said, quote, I'm not a fan of before or after pictures since it's the middle, the journey where all the magic happens. You don't see those pictures in marketing or social media, but that's where the bad ass bitch becomes empowered. Not at the starting line or the finish line, but along the way. I saw myself as a babe, a badass bitch empowered, while on the plane before I even reached my destination. Ah, don't you fucking love that? Right? If you could actually be this babe that you want to be before you actually get there, feel like her. That's everything. I'm so proud of this babe. I'm so proud of her. If you have made losing weight a lifestyle, well, how do I know, Lisa, if I've made it a lifestyle? If you've been trying to lose weight for years, if you keep saying, I'm going to start on Monday, I'm going to start on Monday. Monday's not coming. Monday is not fucking coming. Stop saying you're going to start on Monday and land the damn plane already. Start by listening to episode four and do the visualization. Then tag me, Lisa Cizak, on Instagram and Facebook with what this experience was like for you. What was it like? I want to hear your honest opinion of what happened for you while you listened to Time to Land the Plane visualization. And then I'm going to send you a free copy of my audio book when you tag me and share your experience with me like this other babe did. All right. How many of you are wondering how I lost 80 pounds? How did I do it? right? I've set up all this other groundwork for you and you're all burning and dying to know because you want to jump in and do what I did. Okay. I'm going to tell you what I did and then I'm going to tell you what happened after. You're not going to like any of this. I'm going to tell you today. I'm just warning you right now that you're not going to like it. So I had been trying, you know, to lose weight, After I got my death sentence, I talked about that in episode one. Go back and listen to it if you have not. After I got my death sentence from Dr. Death, I call him, I flailed about on my own for five years. Okay, getting an early death sentence was not enough to propel me forward (laughs) to actually losing the 80 pounds. And my best friend, Chris Harris, who's an amazing Pilates instructor, I just thought I'd throw that in there. I'll probably have her on the show. Anyway, she said, I want you to meet a trainer. I'm like, a trainer, please. I, she's like, I, he's like a male version of me. I think that you would love him. Because Chris, being a trainer, also a personal trainer, tried to train me, but I I just, you know, barreled right over her. We would do a training session. And I'd be like, hey, let's go next door to Starbucks and get some banana bread and a scone and a whatever, frappuccino. So that wasn't working. So she referred me to this trainer and the first time I met him, I was like, I'm going to kill her. She, he's like a 20 year old pretty boy. Like, what is she doing to me? <laughs> like, I did not want this. I was like, I walk in, I remember he said, I'll call him Enrique to say, to protect his identity, but I want to have him on my show also. And Enrique says to me, oh, you must be Lisa. I was this close to saying, 
nope, just a fat girl in the wrong place looking for a bakery. This is not a bakery. Okay, I need to move along now. <laughs> because I was like, what? I cannot have this young pretty boy trainer. Anyway, so he told me, he didn't tell me what to eat, right? He didn't say like, eat this. At, th at the end of our session, oh, by the way, the very first session, tell me if you can relate to this. He's like, step, <laughs> step on the scale. And I'm thinking to myself, I was like, no, I just ate and I just drank. And, you know, like, I don't want to step on the scale now because I was thinking to myself, I could like in the next week, I could starve myself and lose 10 pounds so that when I step on the scale, I won't be as humiliated. <laughs> Like he saw right through that. Like I stepped on that scale and it reads to He's like, all he's all like calm about it. Right. And I'm thinking he's going to fire me. Like, this is so humiliating. 226 pounds. Oh my God. And he was so calm. He always had such a poker face. I never knew if I gained weight, if I lost weight, I never knew what was happening. It was very disturbing. So anyway, so he told me, he gave me a list. He wrote down a list. He said, bought read everyday paleo and he said no sugar <laughs> and I of course said you mean cut back on sugar and he's like no sugar that's how he talked like just like no sugar you're a sugar addict and I was like how does he know I'm thinking oh, my best friend told him she told him all my secrets my Starbucks scone addiction and my pastries and donut addiction he said no sugar because I was a sugar addict. And he was right because I panicked when he said no sugar. I swear to you, I started sweating. I'm sweating right now just telling this story. I started sweating and panicking. I'm like, oh my God, how am I going to live without sugar? Like that is like he was taking my best friend away. He was taking like my comfort away. Who am I going to turn to now if I don't have my best friend sugar? And the everyday paleo, he said to read. And I was like, paleo, what the hell is this shit? Like, isn't that like the caveman <laughs> a diet? <laughs> Eat meat. Give me meat diet. So, whatever. So anyway, I went home that night. Of course, I ordered the I didn't order it. I went to Barnes and Nobles back in the day when you actually went to the bookstore and bought a damn book. And I read that book and one night. And I decided on my own to start going paleo. I, I threw out everything in the pantry. And my daughter, who was like nine at the time, she's like crying because I'm taking away her Cheetos, her mac and cheese, her Oreos, you know, whatever all other crap we bought. I don't remember. My husband's like all worked up because I'm throwing away food, which is like throwing away money, right? They're not on board with this at all. And I replaced it with all of this paleo stuff. I replaced it with beef jerky, which I never bought or ate in my life. All kinds of raw nuts, not the kind that have all the crap in them. I don't know why they do that to nuts. Nuts are delicious on their own. Why do you need to be adding all this extra crap to a nut? And coconut oil. What else? My mind is going blank. Fruits, vegetables, all kinds of protein, right? Like meat, chicken, fish, nuts. Basically, it was no dairy and no more gluten or wheat products. No more of my beloved carbs, right? No more of my bread. No more going to Cheesecake Factory and eating an entire thing of bread. Excuse me. Hmm. Cheers. Oh, that's the other thing I did. I had half my body weight in ounces of water, which was like, what was it? 115, 115 ounces or whatever because I weigh 226 pounds. So basically, if you weigh 200 pounds, you have like 100 ounces of water. So, because there was no, why I did that though, <laughs> because there was no fucking way. I'm not gonna have some little 20 something pretty boy trainer telling me what I can and cannot eat. If I was going paleo, I was doing on my time, my inclination, my, I can't think of the word right now. <laughs> You know what I'm saying, right? Like I didn't want anybody telling me what I could and couldn't eat. And so, oh, and for carbs, 
I learned that vegetables and fruits are carbs. Everybody thinks that a carb is like bread and pastries and potato chips. It's not, people. Fruit and vegetables are carbs. You just have to eat a shit ton of them to get the same energy as you would from a slice of bread. So that I just need to put out there. So let's see what, I, oh, for carbs, I had like sweet potatoes, quinoa, uh, potatoes, and then fruits and veggies. Those were my carbs. And I did not count calories. Enrique did not have me count calories ever. To this day, I still don't have the women I work with count calories because I, who wants to live like that? Who seriously, do you really want to live every day tracking? Like I see all these people tracking stuff on their phone or counting points at Weight Watchers, right? I don't, I didn't want to live that way. And the women I work with usually don't want to, they're just relieved when I say, no, we're not counting calories. They're like, how many calories can I have a day? I'm like, no, you're going to start listening to your body. You're going to eat when you're hungry and stop when you're full. Because if you're like me, you eat for any reason. You're happy, you eat. Let's celebrate. Let's go out for Italian, Olive Garden, right? Or if you're sad, you eat. If you're mad, you eat. Potato chips, because they're crunchy. And you can get out that, that anger. If you're sad, you're going for the ice cream because it's soft and kind of comforting. Or maybe baked goods. So... I was so out of touch with my own body and my hunger cues. And I see that with the women I work with. And I want you, raise your hand, shake your head, do something to acknowledge that if you actually know your hunger cues, like, do you, do you even know when you're hungry? And I don't mean by the time like you're passed out and shaking, oh, I need to eat. I don't mean hangry. Like, do you know your hunger cues? Most of the women I work with have no idea when they're actually hungry. And they often mistake hunger for thirst, right? Their body is in such a dehydrated state that they think they're starving and they're not. They're actually thirsty. Next time you're hungry, check in. How much water did I drink today? Was it a half? What is it? Half my body weight in ounces? Did I have any water today at all? Am I living on black coffee? What am I doing? And just start noticing what actually happens when you're hungry. Because I had no idea. Because I was never hungry. I was constantly eating, so I was never hungry. So besides the eat the besides reading the paleo book, which I don't even know if he ever intended on having me go paleo, to be quite honest, my trainer, <laughs> Enrique. I don't know, because I just did it on my own. So besides the no sugar and then eat, you know or no sugar, read the paleo book. Oh, the other thing he said, he goes, you know how you eat a meal and then you're still hungry and you go back for more? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I, that's my whole life. Like, that's my diet. And he's like, don't do that anymore. Oh, okay, <laughs> so many rules. But this particular rule that he said to me is one that I still use with my own clients and this is everything, okay? This is everything. It's what I lived by for two years that I was with Enrique and what I now pass on to my own clients. You're welcome. And it is, listen to me carefully, do exactly what I tell you to do and this will work. I told you you wouldn't like that. I told you you would not like that. I hand, I actually have a food list. It's a one page list. It is the simplest thing to follow in the world that I give my babes, my bad as bitches empowered and my coaching group and my private clients. And do you know every single time they try to argue with me? Why isn't peanut butter on here? I love peanut butter. I had a nutritionist tell me that peanut butter, I should have a spoonful of peanut butter every night. Why isn't it on here? Why aren't tomatoes on here? Like every single fucking time, just do what I tell you to do and it will work. And if you are that attached to peanut butter, we got to dig a little deeper to figure out 
what's really going on? That's where the emotional part comes in, right? Peanut butter is probably your best friend. I have this one client, she's obsessed with peanut butter. I hand her the list and she's like, what about peanut butter? Like she's going on and on in Voxer. Voxer is a texting app. I'm very unusual as a coach. You get to have me as a lifeline. You get to text me pretty much 24 seven, right? I won't answer 24 seven, but you can text me in real time what issues you're going through. So you don't have to wait until the next session to do it, right? We, we move fast so that you move fast and get to where you wanna go. But this woman was going on and on in a texting thread, right? What's wrong with peanut butter? I love peanut butter. Peanut butter's healthy. Oh, she Googled it too. I Googled it and Google says peanuts are not inflammatory. And I'm like, my head is about to explode, but I'm laughing because I totally expect it. And the real question is, why are you so fucking attached to peanut butter? Why is peanut butter your best friend? Then we dig a little deeper about what's really happening, what she's really panicking panicking about. I'm taking away her best friend, which is peanut butter. And if peanut butter is your best friend, we got some work to do, woman. Okay, so I kept food journals. I'm a big fan of food journals because Enrique told me, write down everything you put in your mouth. You know, my dirty mind went there. And I was like, everything I put in my mouth? Made him blush. He was very shy. I talk about him like he's dead. He's not dead. He's very much alive. He is very shy and quiet, very unlike me. I don't think he knew how to handle me sometimes. So yeah, if you write down everything in a food journal, you'll be shocked because you'll. what happens is maybe... You're like, I don't understand why, how come my pants aren't getting any looser? Like I've been eating healthy and I've been going to the gym. How come my pants aren't any looser? Cause you forgot about the spoonfuls of mac and cheese that you had when you made it for your kids. And why do you even have mac and cheese in the house? Why are you even making that shit for your kids? Your kids don't need that shit in their body. You for, we forget, our brains very easily forget what we actually ate. And so when you track it, the second you start tracking in a food journal, suddenly it cleans up, especially if you got eyes on it. If you got my eyes on it, the second I have a woman start writing down what she eats, it's like, well, that took care of that problem. So that was food that I did. So the training that I did with Enrique, it was personal training three times a week, hit exercises, right? The first time I walked in and I saw WOD on the board, W-O-D, I was like, what the fuck? I was like, what have I gotten myself into? What does that even mean? And it means workout of the day for those of you who don't know. So we started off in the gym, in the nice air conditioned gym. Suddenly we're outside in the 100 degree Tucson desert heat. And that boy's got me running out there saying, you gotta train outside because that's where, you know, you gotta be able to work all the conditions. And he's right. Like if you really wanna get into the best shape of your life, go outside and do some training outside in the elements with the wind, you know, the sun beating down on you, the unstable ground. Like the first time Enrique had me run around the building, he had me run around the building. I said, are you crazy? I was still 200, like, I don't know, probably 210 pounds at that point, you know, mostly fat still. And he ran around the building with me. And then later, like two years later, like on our very last session, he said, go. Like he wouldn't even say, he just point to the door. <laughs> you do one of these. So I said, hey, how come you don't run with me anymore? In the beginning, you always ran with me. And he told me he was honestly not sure I would be able to make it around the building. That's why he ran with me. And now I don't need him anymore. So then he took on another job 
at a gym doing group classes and he wanted me to start doing the group class. And I was like, oh, hell no, I'm not doing group classes. Can you relate to this? Like you don't want to go in the class and be the fattest one there, the most unfit one there, right? Having your bra, the back fat, you know what I'm talking about. You put on those damn sports bras and your back fat is flapping over and your thighs are rubbing together and your cellulite is wiggling all over. I was like, oh, hell No, I mean, I couldn't even do like one sit up, right? I felt completely out of my element. I was like, I'm not doing, I'm not doing it. And what's so funny is all my resistance to that. And I ended up becoming the fitness director in that same gym that I was too scared to enter to do a group class. I ended up being the trainer, the sole train, opening up a brand new location for them and training hundreds of people in a class. Miracles can happen. That's what I'm trying to tell you here. Okay. So what I noticed though, the less I had to lose, the harder I had to work. I call that the last few bitches, right? Like it breaks my heart when like this is a real example of someone who was on her way to a hundred pound weight loss journey and our six months was up and she did not renew with me and I was like girl you still need me like I I know when people still need me and I know when people it's like okay it's time to fly away birdie fly away from mama's nest right she was not ready to fly away from mama's nest yet and it was only like eight pounds away And she went back into her old patterns because sometimes, not even sometimes, always maintaining weight is harder to do than actually losing the weight. I hate, I told you you're not going to like this. I told you there's a lot of things in here you're not going to like. And that's one of them. So my point with all of this is this is another thing you're not going to like. Losing weight is hard. It's hard. And anybody that tells you, you can eat whatever you want and still lose weight. Bull fucking shit. They are lying to you. Run the other way. It is not true. And I know I say, don't say the C word, right? In sessions, if you say the C word, I say, drop all the F-bombs you want in sessions with me. If you say the C word, then you have to do burpees. Can't. But this is one exception to the word can't. You cannot eat whatever you want and lose weight. You cannot out-exercise your poor eating habits. I've I've heard it. Oh, I'm good. Like the one I just told you about. Like, oh, I'm good. Like I I joined Orange Theory. Well, Orange Theory is not going to keep you accountable. And I love Orange Theory. I've done Orange Theory. But they're not going to keep you accountable. When those trainers leave, they leave, Right? They, you're not going to be able to text them and say, hey, help me. I want to be face down in a bottle of wine and a bag of Doritos. You cannot out-exercise bad eating. You just can't. And anybody that tells you any different, run. Run the other way. I lost 80 pounds because I went paleo. I'm not saying you have to go paleo. I'm not saying that paleo is the magic. For my body though, my body responded really well to paleo. You have to find what your body responds to. The women I work with, they res- all every single one of them responds beautifully if they actually do it. If they actually follow my food list, they respond. Their bodies respond beautifully. I have found a magic list of food. It is true that if you actually do it, you will lose the weight. Okay, so (laughs) unfortunately, unfortunately, after all that, that's not the end of the story. Because when I was with Enrique, I wasn't doing all of the work that I have taught you right? I was, now he did have me dig kind of deep for my why. I did figure out my why, which was pictures. I did not know about my I am yet. I didn't know about non-negotiables. I didn't know about visualizing where I was going. There's a lot of this emotional aspects of weight loss that I'm teaching you so that you don't make the same mistake I made. 
and I was not doing that. So the weight slowly boomeranged back, right? I slowly got into my bad habits again because I didn't set that foundation, which is why if you have not listened to episode one, claiming your I am. Episode two, no, episode, sorry, I don't even know my own episodes. Episode one is discovering your why. Why do you even want to lose weight? Why? Number two, claiming your I am, being that person, acting as though you already are, right? I am an athlete. I am in the best shape of my life. I am a sexy motherfucker, whatever it is. <laughs> that, has been a, that has been an I am. Figuring out your main non-negotiable, your oxygen mask that you put on every day and actually do it. And then visualizing, seeing yourself as this woman and what it's going to feel like. Episodes one, two, three, and four, go back and listen if you have not yet. So what's interesting is Enrique even noticed it. He even called me out on it. I went from 226 to 150. And the one time I was running around the building, remember how I told you he had me run around the building? He said, stop it. I was like, okay, stop what? Stop running? Okay, fine with me. He's like, no, stop running as though you still weigh 226 pounds. You now weigh 150 pounds. Weigh run like you weigh 150 pounds. I still had more experience being a fat girl than I did a fit girl. I had not done the work I told you about, right? Time to land the plane, that whole, I didn't do any visualizing of how I wanted to feel, how I was going to feel to weigh 150 pounds, how I was going to feel to run at 150 pounds, to walk around the world in 150 pounds. And so I was still... And I also still had all the emotional demons that I talk about that had lived underneath that fat. Those emotional demons were still there, running the ship, steering my ship. This is why I'm doing what I'm doing for you, laying the foundation. Do not wait until January 1st to feel sexy. Feel sexy now. Feel sexy through the whole holiday season. I'm going to help you by offering you a free one-on-one -on -one Feel Sexy This Holiday Season coaching session with me. In this powerful one-on-one -on -one session, you will become crystal clear on feeling sexy. What is it gonna feel like to feel sexy this holiday season and beyond? You're gonna uncover all the ways you're sabotaging your sexiness. Lastly, you're gonna leave this session feeling renewed and inspired to get your sexy on. <laughs> I have limited spots available. Book now so that you actually get a spot. Click the link below. You are worth it. The main thing though, that now looking back, hindsight is everything, right? Hindsight is 2020. The, re the real reason that weight boomerang back is because I stopped washing my face that night. What the fuck is she talking about? Like, you're, I mean, is she crazy? Not washing her face at night led to her gaining her weight back? Yes. And if you did not listen to episode three, go back and listen to it where I talk about your oxygen mask, putting on your oxygen mask first, your main non-negotiable, that now that is a red flag for me. The second I even think to myself, oh, I don't feel like washing my face tonight, it is a red flag that something in my life needs my attention because I'm about to start going down the weight gaining rabbit hole. For me, my weight gain started when I stopped washing my face at night. And that's what I want you to really tap into is that main oxygen mask, that main non-negotiable, that red flag that goes off so that you know, so that you don't wait until you gained 60 pounds back like I did, you catch it right away. And you're like, uh-uh, girl, you made a non-negotiable contract with yourself. You're washing your face every night, no matter what. 
Okay, so your soul work this week, I have to look and see what your soul work is. <laughs> Changing up all the time. Obviously, if you have not did listen to episode one, two, three, and four, go do it. Okay, go do it now. Well, not now, when you can have a chance. <laughs> oh, this is your other soul work. Subscribe, please subscribe rate and review me so more women can experience the potty mouth preacher and transform their minds, bodies, and souls and get out of this crippling cycle of losing weight and gaining weight and losing weight and gaining weight. Thank you for your support. Now for your soul work. Your soul work, is, so I want to hear, I'm, I love hearing your story. I love hearing your story. I don't look... When I work with clients in coaching groups or private clients or I, talk, I do talks, you know, to large groups of women, I don't look at it me like, I don't look at it like me and you. I look at it like us. Like I am you. You are me. Like your story is my story. My story is probably your story. Sim very similar, right? And we can all learn from each other. So I want to know what have you done to actually lose the weight? And did it work? How long did it last? And thirdly, what do you, what is your boomerang? What caused your weight to boomerang back? What is that main non-negotiable maybe that started the whole thing? That red flag, like, oh shit, like me, like I'm not washing my face at night. This is bad. Something bad's going on in my life that I'm not tending to. And it's going to lead me down that rabbit hole of making, of thinking differently, right? Thinking, oh, what's the point? I'm always going to be fat. So I might as well just eat this. Or I can't, I can't even make it through a day without eating healthy, right? I, what's the point of going to the gym if I just ate that? And then laying your head on the pillow at night going, what, what happened? What happened? That's what we're getting out of. Okay, so tag me on, again, Facebook and Instagram at Lisa Cizak and share your weight loss story so that I want this to be a movement. This is a movement I'm starting. I want women to not be ashamed to share their story, right? Like when did, when did you realize you had a weight problem? What did you do to lose the weight? How long did it last? Did it ever last? And why did it boomerang back? So that we can all band together and learn from each other. That's the whole point of this. And become the women that God created us to be. God did not create you to hate your body. He did not create you to have every Monday. God, when God made the world, he didn't say, okay, every Monday is going to be start your diet day. He did not. It's not in the Bible. I've looked. It's not there. <laughs> so God wants you to love your body. Your body is not just a temple. Your body is God's temple. Your soul is riding around in your body. That's sacred. You are sacred. And remember, you are worth it.